the theology of pilgrimage. Now, we talked about St. James and how he was an evangelist, an apostle in Spain, and how he received an apparition from Our Lady, went back to Jerusalem, and his disciples brought his body back to Spain. But what's the rest of the story? Well, the rest of the story is Islam. Muslims came and took over the Iberian Peninsula, Spain, Portugal, in the year 711. So the Christians went underground, but most of them fled northward. And they hid a lot of their sacred objects, their chalices, sacred art in caves, buried it underground, took it with them. And a lot of Spanish Christian culture was lost. Now, meanwhile in the north, the remembrance of the tomb of James is obscured and it's lost. And so there's a shepherd in the year 813. He's out in Galicia, he's tending his flock, he's a Christian, and he sees either a star or an angel, or maybe both, leading him to a certain place. He goes there, he finds a tomb. He's an illiterate shepherd, he doesn't know what it is, but he knows it's important because this supernatural thing happens. So he goes to the local bishop and brings him to the spot. The bishop reads the inscription and realizes this is the tomb of the Apostle James. And so he calls for the putative local chief or king. This is King Alfonso II, also known as King Alfonso the Chaste. He has set up a um, kind of a refuge kingdom or court in the north, in the city of Oviedo. And he makes the very first pilgrimage to this site. Uh, it's called the Camino Primitivo, the most primitive or original Camino or way. And he walks this whole way to this site. This site has been named Compostela. And it's believed to have come from the Latin campus, like a campus of a college, which means a field, an open place, and stele, or stella, which means star. So Campus Stele means field of the star. So the king comes to this location. He verifies that these are the bones of St. James. They announce it and pilgrims start to come. It's not until later on, a couple hundred years later, that a pope, Pope Calixtus II, authorizes it and accepts it as a pious tradition and a pious custom. By the way, Pope Calixtus II is also the pope who condemned Christians for persecuting Jews and forcing Jews to convert to Christianity in Europe. So he's an important pope in those two regards, both for the Camino of St. James or Santiago and for the history of Christian-Jewish relations. Now, as the news spread about the relics of St. James, as they're known in Spanish, Santiago, Sant means Sanctus, Saint, Yago is just a corruption or abbreviation of Yaakov, as I mentioned in the first video. Yaakov, Jacobus, is the Greek Latin name for James. So Santiago, Santiago is the name for St. James in Spanish. So even Charlemagne in France is writing and recognizing this miraculous discovery and pilgrims are coming. And over time, a number of pilgrimage routes develop. And this is called the Camino de Santiago, the way of St. James. You have the Primitivo Camino. That's the one that Alfonso the Chase did. You have the Camino Frances, which comes all the way from France, all the way across the north of Spain. You have the Camino uh, de la Plata, which is the one of silver, which comes from Seville on up. You have the Portuguese way, which comes all the way up Portuguese, uh, Portugal, the English way, which goes by ship all the way down, all kinds of ways. Ultimately, the Camino starts at your front door where you take your first footstep. And I recently completed the Camino about two weeks ago. My father and I did it by bike, and we did the second half of the Camino Frances. The rules are if you do the Camino, you have to do a thousand kilometers by foot or 200 kilometers by bike or horse in order for it to be legit. When you get there, you get this really cool certificate that's in Latin that authorizes that you've done it, that you've completed it and congratulates you. And it's a moving experience. You know, as I came over the hills and saw the spires of the cathedral after days of rain and sweat and falling off my bike and hardships and hurting my knee, it, was, it reminded me of this call that we all have to be pilgrims in this life to go through hardships, to go through troubles, and to go through good times, and to rejoice in those things, and to come over the hill and see the spires. And I imagine what it must be like to be a Christian on the doors of martyrdom or on the doors of death and know that I am about to enter into the next world. 
I'm about to continue my journey into the arms of Jesus. And ultimately, that's what being a pilgrim is. This life ultimately is not our home. We are pilgrims, as it says in the New Testament. And we are living the faith of Abraham. We are called from a land of paganism, and we walk by faith, not by sight, to the final pilgrimage, which is God himself, heaven and in his arms. So I'd like to encourage you to try to pilgrimage. You know, the, the classic big three are the pilgrimage to the Holy Land, to Jerusalem, that's in the far east. The pilgrimage to St. James, that's in the far west in Spain. And then right in the middle is the pilgrimage to Rome. But the neat thing about the Camino Santiago is it's the last true walking pilgrimage. And in that way, it's ascetic. It's sacrificial. It requires something of you. You are exhausted. So you really do enter into the experience of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Mary, Joseph, Jesus, and all the early patristic and medieval pilgrims. You enter into that tradition. So I'd encourage you to check it out. Check out the Camino de Santiago. Maybe book a trip and go do it. And I think I'm going to go back. And maybe one day I'll bring a bunch of people with us. Maybe we'll do a big group. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching this Theology of Pilgrimage, and may God bless you. All right, well, thanks for watching this micro trilogy on the Theology of Pilgrimage. We're going to try more of these, but I'd like to hear from you. Let me know in the comments if you like this format. Hopefully, we can get more content and arrange it in a way that's easier to ac access. So if you like them, share them with your friends, share them on Facebook, subscribe and like. Again, thanks for watching this micro trilogy of the Theology of Pilgrimage. God bless.